Hello, fellow Araxians. Today, I want to talk to you about interpolation and extrapolation. These are common techniques in shooters and Planetside 2 as well to compensate for latency. Now, there's a lot of tiny details that factor in to a player's latency. And to set the groundwork for discussion, I'm going to go over those here. But if you spent some time watching a channel like Battle Nonsense, you probably already know most of this information. So you guys can go ahead and skip ahead to the time listed on the screen. For anyone else that wants a rundown, let's dive into the weeds. We're going to approach this as if we are the same person, okay? This guy is going to represent us. The way you have to think about this is your client is the future, the server is the present, and every other character out there is an image of the past. So we issue a command by pressing W. Now on our screen, we start moving, but in reality, that's just a prediction that hasn't happened yet. Our keyboard sends a signal, our CPU processes it, and packages it into a synchronization message that is going to be sent to the server. Now at this point, you need to understand what the tick rate is or the cycles per second. That is how many times per second are these synchronization messages sent. Now I'm sure these values have changed over time and hopefully the developers will correct me to what is accurate to right now. But this is the last information we have on what the Planetside 2 tick rate is. When a zone is at zero load, there are 66 cycles per second. That is 15 milliseconds between cycles. Now this information came out during a performance patch. So before this change, it was possible for the servers to drop all the way down to 15 cycles per second, equating to 66 milliseconds between tick. And after that change, even a fully loaded zone would only drop to 30 cycles per second. Now that's just the tick rate for how often the server sends a synchronization message. I have zero information on how often clients send synchronization messages and if they are adaptive as well. For this demonstration, let's say it is an adaptive tick rate and we're in a big battle, so our client tick rate is at 30 cycles per second. So our hardware works fast. In a matter of two milliseconds, we've taken that command and turned it into a synchronization message. Let's pretend it's the worst case scenario, we just missed a tick, so that synchronization message isn't sent for 33 milliseconds. Now I have a hardwired broadband connection, I play on Connery and I average about 40 milliseconds ping. Now that's round trip, so let's tack on 20 milliseconds for that message to get from my client to the server. Now the server farm is bogged down, so let's give it 15 milliseconds to receive, process, and create another synchronization message that can be sent to the hundreds of clients connected to it. So now we've traveled 70 milliseconds back in time, from our client the future to the server the present. So this server has hundreds of clients connected to it, and it needs to send this synchronization message out to some guy in Timbuktu. So worst case scenario while we're at 30 cycles per second is it has to sit 33 milliseconds before it goes out. Since this guy's so far away and he's using his neighbor's Wi-Fi, this guy's rocking a 350 millisecond ping. Let's throw a little bit of processing time on him, and it takes 210 milliseconds for him to receive that synchronization message. So right off the bat, there's about a 310 millisecond difference between your client and this other guy's client. Just for a quick reference, the quad headshot, time to kill on a carve, is 240 milliseconds. Okay, if you skipped ahead, you're at the right spot. Now we're going to discuss interpolation. If we just rendered the last synchronization message our client got, a lot of things would go wrong. First, our GPU is turning out frames a lot faster than the tick rate. So even if your rig was clipping along at 60 frames per second, your GPU would be rendering the information from each synchronization message twice, and it would look effectively like 30 frames per second. And let's say everything really goes to hell and the server tick rate goes down to 15 cycles per second. Now each synchronization message is rendered four times and it's really starting to look like a slideshow even though you still have 60 FPS. What interpolation is going to do is take that information from the remote clients and set it back one, two, or three server ticks. This is another place where I don't know what value Planetside uses. It's possible to use adaptive interpolation 
where clients that have a good connection are set back only one server tick because the server trusts it will always get a synchronization message from that client. Clients that suffer from higher packet loss, the server may want to set further back in time because it expects to miss some of those synchronization messages. In this manner, if it misses one message, it still has a couple more ticks to make up for that. Now when your client is rendering extra frames between each cycle, it knows where those remote clients need to be in the future, so it can smoothly create extra frames to fill in the gap between cycles. The major downside to interpolation is that if it sets that remote client back three server ticks, it's effectively setting that character back another 100 milliseconds. So that guy that's in Timbuktu goes from being 310 milliseconds behind you to 410 milliseconds behind you. But I promise you couldn't live without interpolation. It would be a stuttery, jittery mess. So how do we try to close that gap? Latency from client to server, server to client, and then that added delay from the interpolation. We extrapolate. Extrapolation is going to predict that client that's far in the past, closer to what the server expects it to be at the present. 99% of the time, your character is going in one direction. Even walking along straight for three or four seconds, you make a 90 degree turn in a matter of 200 milliseconds, then you're going in that new direction for the next five seconds. Even when you're 80 80 strafing, 99% of that time you are going in one direction. It's only a matter of 10 milliseconds where your direction changes. Extrapolation is based on this notion that most of the time, clients will continue to travel in the same direction that they have been traveling. If there was zero extrapolation, there would be situations where the guy from Timbuktu could shoot at you a full 380 milliseconds before you could see him. And so I expect extrapolation happens client side. The server will issue a value suggesting just how laggy this player is, and your client will predict that character forward on your screen to try to bring him closer to the present. Okay, so we got the basics down. Interpolation is tugging clients further back into the past, and extrapolation is predicting them forward. This system has one fatal flaw that has been in PlanetSide 2 since beta. Extrapolation doesn't obey the physical game environment. Most veteran players are so used to it now, while it may bother them, they just kind of look at it and move on. Whereas the newer players I see will sometimes hop in yell chat and shout about those warp hackers running around. Really, these people aren't hackers. They're usually players with higher latency and maybe a little extra packet loss. And they are extrapolated into walls or through ceilings or through floors whenever they jump or move around. So a player that has a lot of, I'm going to use a catch-all phrase here, lag, that is jump jetting near a ceiling, will be extrapolated into that ceiling and since hit detection is client side and they are no longer in your view, you can't land a hit on them. The community has been calling for ping limits for a long time now because that would effectively fix this issue. Clients that are updating at a reasonable rate and have a solid connection without packet loss won't run into these negative side effects of extrapolation. I think DBG's hesitation to do this is because there is only five servers, they have a large paying player base that doesn't have servers nearby, so they're forced to connect to a server where they have a higher ping. It's an infuriating experience for sure if you've ever bumped into one of these players. Now let's take a look at one of these engagements and see what we can do to fix it. Center coming in at Charlie. What happened here? The light assault drops from the ledge and starts sending my client synchronization messages that he's going down. Now this is where my client side extrapolation kicks in. On his client, he's landed on the floor and starts shooting at me. But my client won't receive that information for another 150 milliseconds. Now my brain has suspended disbelief, so I believe that floor is a hard object that that player will land on. And I shoot where I expect that remote client to be. In reality, my client is still extrapolating, so he ducks through the floor and pops out a few seconds later shooting at me. Here's the thing, if extrapolation had to obey the in-game physical world, 
it would have predicted exactly where that remote client really was. Even if my client didn't really know where that remote client was, my brain would have been none the wiser because it would have just looked like he landed on the floor and then I shot him. Almost every situation where I see someone justifiably raging and posting a clip about someone that warped into a wall, there would have been no issue at all if extrapolation just had to obey the in-game world. If that enemy client just spent a few seconds bumping into a wall or bumping into the floor. Now I have tested extrapolation in a few different environments. Players certainly bounce in and out of the walls of objects or buildings, but terrain isn't immune to this effect either. I feel like it's been passed off as a necessary side effect of lag compensation. And while I don't think it's an easy job to make extrapolation obey the in-game environment, it is of the utmost importance. The combination of bad extrapolation with client-side hit detection makes it so the people with the high latency have the advantage, which is a bad way to go about it. And the other people that don't understand why it's happening just think it's hackers, which is another bad side effect. I'll probably be in the minority here, but I think the worst part of it doesn't have to do with losing engagements or people thinking there's hackers out there. It goes back to this thing we talked about called suspension of disbelief, which is really immersion. When people come plumbing it in from an epic gale drop and all break through the roof of the building, the world feels very fake and permeable. Movies and video games depend on making sure that their clientele are immersed, that they forget what they are watching or playing is completely fake. And this bad extrapolation really yanks you back to reality. It's a tough decision. What do you work on? What do you fix? Now that the game is getting a little bit older and your dev team has shrunk. But I think tackling the extrapolation system and making it obey the in-game environment would have far-reaching ripple effects that would reduce players' concerns about hackers. It would make playing against high-latency players much more bearable. And finally, there'd be a general increase in immersion. That's all for now, folks. And I will see you planet side and if you're enjoying catching another approach or opinion on all things planet side please don't forget to hit that subscribe button it's right here